Citizen Television, my guest tonight, I've been telling you all evening and all day long, the billionaire industrialist and philanthropist who's been around, I tell you, for nine, count them, nine decades. He's 90 years old. This man still goes to the office every single day. There's a lesson to be learned in all of this. That's why he is who he is. And giving back is one of his big things. He's got Manu Chandaria Foundation just about in every university in the city. And it's growing, and he's still giving. Sit back, folks. This man has a lesson for every one of us. Manu, good to see you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. You kept your word last time. You cancelled on me last minute. That's right, but I was sick. <laughs> I'd just gone to the hospital at that time. Yeah. <laughs> and I announced it, right? That's right. You yeah. announced. And everybody kept on phoning. <laughs> <laughs> They were saying, are you okay? Are you fine? Fine. No. <laughs> Manu, 90 yeah. years old. Well, already started the journey. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Today is Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela would have been 100 today. Yeah. He would, he would have been 100 today. Absolutely. Absolutely. You met him? I met him. I met him because I was the trustee of Pan-African uh, uh, Pan African Parliament. And they wanted to have some social aspect also. So there were five trustees appointed by the Pan-African Parliament. Yeah. Every country sends five members of parliament there twice a year. Right. And they discuss about politics. But then they wanted to see how to do social work. Yeah. So they appointed some five trustees. I was appointed there. And Madiba came down to open it. Was he president or was he after he was president? No, after that, after that, yeah. And? Right. And when he came in, he was just uh, absolutely, when I told him a joke, he laughed like a child. What joke was that? No. <laughs> Come on, Manu. <laughs> I, Thank you. I want to laugh like Madiba. <laughs> no, but the point is that he was, he knew everything. He asked me, I told him I've come from Kenya. He asked me about Kenya, he asked me about Uganda, he asked me about Tanganyika. Tanzania and asked me about how things are going with the East African community. Yeah. Knowledgeable in almost all respect. Yeah. And then said, how are things going? And we told him that how we are moving. And on that day, you opened it up. But he was just, I must say that that's a man to meet. Yeah. And I got much interested in him because I was also Gandhian in philosophy. Mm. And uh, it was nothing based on nonviolence sacrifice yeah. and to do things for others and that's what he would did so that's what you've gotten from him you, you took a little gandhi I, I i followed gandhi in when i went to university i followed him for four years yeah. and i totally accepted what he wanted to tell us and do what things amazing it means it was a very very simple life yeah, yeah. and now yesterday President Barack Obama gave the keynote lecture at the Mandela Foundation. I don't know if you watched any of it. Yeah, I, I, I watched it. Oh. I watched it. He was just great. Brilliant. Great, great, great. Brilliant. Great, great. But you know, Yali, the Young African, African Leaders, Leaders yes. Initiative. Yes. Um, you know, the Chandaria Innovation Center at Kenyatta University. Yeah, okay, you. He wanted to come and open it as soon as possible. So we gave the whole top floor. And they converted it in two or three months, two months, I think. And within two months, everything was ready. And the first cohorts came there. And he met them. Were you there? No, I was not there at that time, no. Did I you go? I was traveling. Did you go to Kogelo? No, I didn't go. Now I, I travel very little. I just, at this age, I must tell myself, hey, hey, come on, man, can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, it's been a great couple of days. I mean, him in Kogelo and now in Johannesburg, and it looks like there's a lot of optimism. Huh? There's a wind blowing across this continent. Would you say so? Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. I think that some, more and more people like him to push up and tell us exactly where we are, yeah. where we should go. Yeah. yeah, and call it like it is. Yeah, absolutely. You, know, you, 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 can't, you just can't paint it and give something different. Tell it exactly what you think, what you saw, and, and explain that life can be much better. Yeah. It has to be built by us. Nobody's going to build for us. 
for us, by us. By us. And you've been doing this, Manu, for the last, what, four, five, six decades? Six, 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 six and a half de decades. Yeah, yeah six yeah. and a half decades. Yeah, yeah. You've been doing this yeah. in an environment that's not very friendly to business. No, no, because we started with the, originally with the colonial times, then the first president, then Moi regime, then Mai Kiwaki, now Uru. The question is that, are we really interested in Kenyans' goodwill and, and, and good, goodness for them and making them happier? It can be done. Lots of countries have done in our own lifetime. We kept on giving example of Singapore. We give an example of Korea. So what's the difference with us? We got same two eyes, two hands, two ears, everything. So what, what's kept us back, Manu? What is I, it? I think greed, probably. Yeah. Greed, greed. And I think we should, we should get out for that. And I think that I'm, I'm so glad now that at least we are now focused. That the president has come out with these four agendas. And we are focused and making very sure that we want to achieve it. By saying it doesn't happen. Yeah. By doing it happens. Yeah. He has the will, right? You can he see he has the will. Yeah, yeah. But does he have the way? Because there's so many distractions, let's face it. Every single day there's a distraction that's pulling back Agenda 4. That's right. But the point is this. Why don't we depend on people of goodwill? There are many. There are many Kenyans who are just either given up or not bothered. Push them. Because they, 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 they can make a change. Because it, it's not a possibility that two or three or four or fifty or hundred or five hundred makes a decision for forty-five million people. No, it cannot be. And we need to move away from it. And it's not something which is a miracle. When I started, it was a miracle to be in the United States and to see Europe and Japan coming up like that. It was a miracle. but. Now, after that, you know, how many countries have become prosperous? And there's no difference between us and them. Yeah. And so, we need to really put ourselves. And I think that what we, we require is that people of goodwill must get up and support, push this agenda. Because it's clear, without creating jobs, we cannot. Yeah. Cannot function. And speaking of creating jobs, one of the big four agendas is manufacturing. Manufacturing. Right? Manufacturing. Industrialization yeah. and then yeah. job Manuf creation. Yeah, job creation. You are the ultimate uh, industrialist and, and you're into manufacturing. How yeah. have you been able to to sustain this throughout well, the well it's hard work. If say if we would be somewhere else, what would we be? Uh, let me give an example that uh, we started exporting from China and manufacturing in China. In 10 years, we had 10,000 people working. And while we were in Africa, 16 countries, just about 20,000 people, it took 65 years to reach that 25. Why? I think that, uh, unless and until we see that everyone around us yeah expects the same as I expect, then I think that we, we have got some possibility. But if I'm not prepared to look down and only look up, then I think there's no way you can manage it. I think we've got to make very sure and hold everybody's hand. Did you at one point want to give up? Well, a number of times you'd have given up. but Give uh, yeah, up and pack up? And, well, not pack up because born here, this is my soil, don't go young you. <laughs> no, no, don't go, don't give up and go away. No, but the idea is that frustrations. Yeah, uh, we got to stop. It, it cannot happen. Look at today. Everything that you see today is not from Kenya. Yeah, and how many jobs that we need? Three million young people are just pacing streets every day. Yes, and come January next. Another, another a million, million will be on the street with degrees not all the degrees 
diplomas. But, but primary school, we had already become 18 year old. Secondary schools already passed or dropped out some of them, and university graduates. And now we've got not, we've got 70 universities. Yeah. So we, we have all the possible, as far as the skills are concerned, intelligence are concerned, we are no less than anyone. But I think that we've got to put it to the right way. And I think somebody should keep on pushing that no, that's not the target. Target is still there. You know, some people do do push, but there's a lot of pushback as well. Yes. You know, uh, and, and, yeah. and you know, it's been said that we need a benevolent dictator. We need a Lee Kuan Yew or a Paul Kagame who, you know, who will yeah. say, you know what, it's either my way or the highway. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, I, w I would like to say that, look, every country cannot have it that way. But I think that the way now, the will that His Excellency has showed now, that he wants to leave a legacy of making a difference in the lives of the people. And you cannot do it without without jobs, without having enough food on our table. You can't do it. And yet we are hemorrhaging this economy with all that stealing that's going on every yeah, single yeah, day. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the absolutely. people there who want to be Manu Chandaria overnight. Well, it, that, that, it, took, it takes a lot of years. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they want to be you overnight. You saw today 1.5 billion shilling in that Roraka land scheme. That's right. It was bought right. like three, four times. That's right. They, that's right. That's right. I mean, come on. What, what, what is wrong with us? Well, I think it's uh, the, we got to ask ourselves. There's no medicine outside. It's with us. And somebody and good leadership over here telling us exactly that I don't want to walk one step and I don't want to see all those behind me. I want to hold their hands and be with me. That's the whole spirit. And unless and until the, the country moves together, then and then it'll happen. Yeah. yeah. And you know, Mother Teresa used to always tell us, a family who prays together stays, stays together. together. She has been to our home four times. Mother Teresa? Yeah, four times. To your home? Yes. Okay, while well, we're at it, who else has been to your home? <laughs> no, Go on. Let's not, no, no, many, on. many, many. But, 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 uh, but I think that the, at least these are the types of the people that I'd like to really follow. Yeah. Obama said something very profound in, so that, in Joburg yesterday. He says, look, how many houses can I live in at one, at one time? You know, how much money is enough money? You know, because he's making a lot of money now with book tours and, 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 and lectures. He says, I have so much money now, which is nowhere near what, you know, the Aliko Dangotes or the Patrice Motsevis yeah, have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he says, it's enough. It's enough. So how much? You know, you've got a beautiful suit on you. On my wardrobe, there are five suits. Five? One new comes in, one goes out. Goes out where? Given him. Can I have your next suit next time you're just throwing it away? <laughs> you're a little taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Then that came down from the Gandhi philosophy. As much what you really need, you have it. That's it. Five suits. Five suits. One comes in. Another goes out. How many shoes? Five, that's it. <laughs> Total five suits, and then the cupboard is only five suits, full stop, and, and three, three jackets. That's it. My God. <laughs> but it's, it's, not, it's not, the point is that who can, who can check yourself, yourself alone? Yeah. Somebody else can always tell you something, but you go to check yourself. Okay, but when you, when you look at the papers, newspaper headlines on your way to work every morning, and you still go to work, right? Yep. When you look at the newspaper headlines and you see the amount of stealing, it's, it's not corruption, this is open stealing going on. What goes through your mind? Well, I, I, think, that, I think that every Kenyan should be so upset. Must be upset. Yeah, no, we're talking you because you yeah, earn yeah, your money. I, I, I get upset because I said for me to see this, all I see is because I was chairman for Street family, street children. Yeah. 
for 10 years. And I used to go into the slums. Oh my God, that's an awful, awful situation. When you see that, and it's another Kenyan. Yeah. It's not somebody else that we're we are looking at. It's, it's our own people. So I think that the whole point is that how can we just say enough is enough? Yeah. Every, everyone needs a lift. I cannot be only here. I need a lift as much as I can. And I think that the holding hands together and holding the hands of the people of goodwill today mm -hmm. in this country is the only answer. Push. That philanthropy spirit, where did that come from? Oh, it came from because I went and I studied in the States. And I thought that, oh my God, people have Ford Foundation, they got Rockefeller Foundation, Vanderbilt, and MacArthur, and I don't know how many of them. Yeah. So when I came back, you know, we just decided that, asked our parents, all of us, six of us were there, and said, how about having a, 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 a Chandaria Foundation? And my father looked at us and, and he just said that because I was a spokesman. I looked at him and said, hey, something wrong with you? I said, what, what, what's wrong with me? I'm just only suggesting to a little foundation. He said, no, you live too long in the United States. I said, I've stayed three years in the United States. What do you mean by the, I lived too long in the United States? He said, no, come on, there's a big hole over here. The 36 people at home, we are a joint family. The 36 people at home, fill that hole first. And we said, okay. After five, four or five years, I think later, he came back. and said, 10% of my company, I want to give it. Why? I wanted to see that there is always from start, when you when don't have very much, yeah. that you have a philosophy that you want to give and if the foundation is in front of you every year every day you will think about something if it's not you don't see you don't think yeah so it's 1956 we created that chandaria foundation 62 years yeah and yet there are people with pretty much money like you more than much more than me <laughs> i don't have the money but the l lots of lots of money and they don't think about that at all well i think i think that the question is that we need to we need to cultivate this whole spirit whole spirit of giving yeah. giving is not only money giving is everything as long as you can hold a hand you go to the hospital today here go to kenyatta hospital just hold the hand of somebody and say, oh, what's wrong with you? And say, this is wrong. All right. Can I pray for you? I hope you'll be well. You know, that much. Yeah. You can. If giving, is, giving is easy if you want to give. Mm. Giving is very difficult if you don't. If I you know. weren't where you are, if you didn't have this, this huge conglomerate Chindaria, would you be who you are? Would you be the same person? Well, I was, uh, when I was a student, I followed Gandhi like nobody's business. When he had a Quit India movement, and in four years' time, I graduated from the university, and we got the independence. That was the spirit. Give, not this, this. And, and sacrifice, simple living, as much as you can. And being a Jain, I'm, I don't eat meat, no fish, no chicken, nothing. My life is simple. <laughs> the point is that, how do you keep it simple? How do you fill pain of others together? Yeah. That's the only way. So in this simple life, what is it? I mean, what does Manu do when he's not? eating vegetables and stuff. I mean, what, what do you do? You play golf or what, what do you do? No, no, play nothing. Uh, I think it's my daughter is over here. Yes. Because of that, I saw for the first time uh, the football World Cup. Where? Which is here. 
Okay. She's here, so I saw that. For the first time? First time. No, the full game, full game. Yes. Right, right, right. I've just seen some shorts here yes. and there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've not played any time. So, sports is not the interest I have. Reading, writing, yeah. working for other things, and trying to create more awareness. Yeah. That's major. But did you enjoy the game? Oh, yes. France, wonderful. Croatia? Wonderful. You know, that's very interesting, you know. Uh, you know, we have got a cup in a saucer. And the saucer was supposed to be, when the tea is hot, you put it in the saucer, saucer and then drink and from the drink. saucer. So he said, this guy's Christians were drinking the saucer. French took the cup. <laughs> <laughs> That's deep. That's deep. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay, back to manufacturing. Yeah. You see what's been happening in Mombasa? Yes. Big backlog of goods coming in. Huge. First of all, tell me something. SGR, was it a big mistake or was this a game changer? I mean, we've had all arguments. To me, it's game change. Let's not talk about the cost, okay. but it's game change. Yeah. Because we need faster movement, as fast as we can. So it's not a white elephant? No, it's not a white elephant. If you want to run it well, it's not a white elephant. Because you must remember that we are sitting on a cost. God has given us a, a, a beautiful cost. But look at the people in Uganda, Rwanda, Eastern Congo. They all depend on us. Yeah. And unless until we start thinking in that direction, that it's not mine alone. If I can, I can earn, I can do a better job, I can have a, create a better possibility if I can use my assets well. And I think that the SGR, forget about the cost, everything, but it can be done. Now, why this piling up is going on? There has to be more understanding between two people. You are a seller, I'm a buyer. You got to understand my requirements, and I got to understand that you are sitting over there and, and operating a, a shop not without profit. I appreciate that. That relationship must be there. Now, if I just make up my mind and say, oh, I'll import this and I'll import this, and the guy doesn't have anything in the pocket to buy it, what's the point of it? Makes no sense. Yeah. So, th there has to be a, a common understanding. Yeah. I think that the people who are importers must be a part and parcel of every decision at the port, at the railways. If they're not the part of it, then, uh, you know, uh, you take a decision which is, you know, many, many people are, uh, in policies are made in the offices without seeing the after effects. So after effects would be very, very difficult. Mm. In, in haste, we can take all the steps. But always we must remember that are we doing the good for it or are we not? If you're not doing good, I think it doesn't help. Okay, what about building another port north of Mombasa in Lamu? Does that make sense? Help me well, out here. Well, Lamu was really first oil of southern South Sudan. Yes. Unfortunately, for the last three years, it's gone. It's not either this way or that way. Otherwise, the idea was to see if you can have a port, then immediately that it can go there. Instead of coming right at one side, going right up to Port Sudan. Yeah going out it would be easier for here to go and that would be quite okay the point is that the ports without population support has no value it has a value because there is a raw material there in southern sudan and there is a sea nearby here if you can connect it it would be okay but what about our oil in turkana going that way well can do if we can have a pipeline, we'll go do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right now, we are just bringing what you were doing until now is taking every truck from Mombasa, bring this way. Now we want to take oil this way. Right? Yeah. But I think that the point is that over a period of time, it, nothing builds overnight, it takes its own time. But I think that as long as there is a much better 
understanding between both the users and the providers of services if if there's a connection proper connection then i think that we can explain i can explain what the problem with with my cargo coming in i can explain that yeah. but how would you explain it in the ministry of uh, I, it's, it's a support minister of transport it's very difficult yeah yeah so i think that what is required is that little bit more still more dialogue understanding and i might see only my good way i might not want to see the other good way yeah but as long as we can discuss and talk and understand why you want to do this way and why i don't want you to do this way then you can make a decision what do other Indian businessmen feel of Manu Chandari? I, I'm just curious here. What do they think? Because, you know, you, no, you seem to be a different nothing. kind of guy here. No, 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 nothing, nothing. No, no. <laughs> they, they know me. I, I, I wish. <laughs> That's good. That's nice of them to good, think good about me. That's it. <laughs> nothing more than that. Yeah. No, no. The non-violent fella. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, but also regional leaders... Will they support this all? Because, you know, Kenya is the hub of everything. It's the hub. Like you said, uh, Rwanda, Burundi, DRC, South Sudan, even Tanzania. We are the hub. But there's not that cooperation, huh? Well, cooperation, you said, these are all we are looking at the, co at the political level. Let's leave it to the business level. Let's leave it to men to men. But if you are a user of this product and I'm a consumer of that product, let's leave it to them. I think then you can build. The question is that you cannot just impose things. Yeah. And every, every imposition that you do, it always either dampens the, the, the business or it, or it goes on one way rather than. Yeah. So to me, there is only way is sit together, talk, you don't like my tomatoes why don't you like my tomatoes but you know you keep the tomato trucks on one side for t for 12 hours in the sun what happens to tomato right. there's no more tomatoes left yeah. anyway yeah so i think that it's understanding and little must misunderstanding and this whole question of line of sovereignty i am this is my country at the end of the day when we should talk about it's our country africa yeah. It's our continent. Speaking of the continent, and I'm glad you ra put, raised that, the Continental Free Trade Agreement, yes. CTFA, was just signed the other day. Yeah. A lot of countries jumping on board as we speak. Yeah, yeah. And now, hopefully, you know, the market will be in Africa. Yeah. Rather than, you know, sending our milk or flowers to Amsterdam. Yeah, why should we? Why should we? Yeah, why should we? <laughs> we can do it, everything over here. As long as there's a market, we should be able to do it. You think so it'll work? It will work. It will work. It it works. Why would people buy from? Wh why do I buy products from Japan? Because it's costlier, but the quality wise, it's number one. So the question is that why should I buy from Japan when I can get it from South Africa? Yeah. The whole point is that the people people must understand and make it easier for each other. And if we can make it easier for each other in trade and business, then there's no problem. None. I, no, 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 no problem. The point is, every growing economy has got its own problems to solve. Nothing is easy to build. Everything is difficult to build. Yeah. But you got to be able to. One stone go, goes down, you got to pick it up again and put it. Yeah. But if you don't do it, then that stone will be there, and you will be sitting here. That's it. When you see Ethiopia and Eritrea coming together, yep. you see South Sudan handshaking. Yes. Is that, does that give us hope? Yes, it does gives that us hope. It gives us hope. As a matter of fact, we should be doing the same thing between our states as much as, 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 much as possible. Yeah. Three visits, four visits, five visits, six visits. You know, you become synonymous. I've lived in colonial uh, uh, East Africa. There was one shilling. There was no, no, no kipandes and passport between the countries. 
That was the same shilling. You can use it in Tanzania. You can use it in 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 Kampala. That you can use it in Mombasa. It was it was being done. So what is wrong that just because the numbers have grown, that it cannot be done? It can be done. The point is that you need people who are prepared to say, yes, you grow. I also grow. Mm. If you grow. And I don't grow, things don't work. Yeah, everybody should be win win. Patrick Njiru, you know him? Yeah, 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 absolutely. He says a big hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He Go says a big friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Kabando wa Kabando. Yes, very much. Very he says much. Dr. Manu Chandari exemplifies creation of jobs and wealth through industrious innovations. Proud of you, Dr. Manu Chandari Kabando wa Kabando. He's proud of you. As are many people. I'm shocked. Why are you shocked? Five huh? suits. Mm, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Five suits. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. Yeah, Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I wish I wish people would, would take a leaf. No, no. The, the point is that you don't sacrifice and you don't become simple for yourself. What example do you set then? Yeah. Yeah. And, and when you see hundreds and millions, I've seen, I've, because I, every, every slum I go to, I could walk in, walk in every one of them. And people come and say, come on, can I take a photograph with you? Can I sit with you? Can Nobody goes. No, no one. Because they don't know that I go there <laughs> once in 10 days, 20 days, I'm there. Yeah. So the point is that if they feel comfortable, if I feel comfortable with my government, I'm happy, I grow. I don't feel comfortable. I sit back. Yeah. Sitting back is not an answer. Can I take a photograph with you later? Sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Manu Chindario, folks, this man, I tell you, learn a little something from this humility that comes with a man who is a billionaire industrialist and a philanthropist. He's giving much of it back to his own people. What a philosophy, simple as that.